welcome to another episode of Building a Leadership Mindset Podcast. I'm your host, Nikki C., all the way from Philadelphia, PA. I am super excited about uh, this week. It's Friday. It's the end of the week. It has been a phenomenal week, and I'm just going to pop something up on my screen just to share. We have been celebrating 100 interviewed episodes completed in less than a year. It has been absolutely phenomenal. So I, this is the second round that I have been doing it. So last uh, December, I celebrated the first 50 guests. Now I'm celebrating the next 50 guests. And we're still counting, just bringing amazing people uh, that I've been connected to through my various communities and projects. And they're just doing some amazing things in their space. And their story needs to continue to grow. And this is why Building a Leadership Mindset does that. They bring people on and just give them more um, exposure and introduce them to new networks. So super excited to have my guest today. This is brought to you by Bomb Global and the Connected Leaders Academy. And I'm actually, I actually met him for the first time in New York while we were celebrating uh, the Warrior Women Jumbotron. And it looked like he had a book coming out on the Jumbotron too. So we were just sharing uh, this experience uh I believe a week or two ago, but it was absolutely phenomenal. And without further ado, let me introduce you to Martin Salma. He is known as the architect of the Warriors Life Code. He specializes in helping people frustrated in their life quickly shift their mindset to uncover their greatness so they can live their true potential and enjoy life. An example of what he achieved is a client like Roberta who lost her six-figure job due to COVID and came to Martin depressed and felt very lost within a short time. She had, quote, direction, focus, and a renewed energy around all the possibilities uh, she could pursue. Uh, she got getting back on track to enjoy life. The key to his success is he mastered the ability to live incredibly full every day, which he turned into an acronym called L-I-F-E, LIFE, and created the Warriors Life Code Coaching Program. Without further ado, and I'll let him share what LIFE stands for, which is absolutely uh, incredible. And um, we said it, so hopefully you picked up on that. Um, here we go. We have Martin Salama. How are you? Nikki. Hello, hello. First thing is congratulations on your first 100 episodes. Thank you. Thank Fantastic. you. Definitely and I'm didn't very expect excited that. to be 101. Yes. <laughs> well, they are definitely... Uh, adding up. We are just getting some amazing people like yourself. Thank you so much for that. Um, I didn't see it coming in less than a year to, to hit that range, but I've been really persistent and consistent with just growing and sharing the community as they come in. There's no time for waiting, right? That's so right. tell us a little bit about who you are, where you're from, and how did you get into this space that you are in today? Okay, great. So I'm Martin Salama. That's the right way to pronounce it. Uh, I should have told you that beforehand, but that's on me. Uh, and I live in Brooklyn, New York. Uh, in the summertime, I live down by the Jersey Shore, which is where I am today. Uh, and we met actually 10 days ago, like you said, uh, when we were both releasing books. I think you were there supporting your friends and supporting those women warriors. And I had just re I'm just releasing my book, Warrior to Warrior. So it was a warrior day out there in, uh, in, in Times Square. So that was fantastic. And um, yeah, the book basically came out of what I had gone through for the last 15 years, which basically started in the right at the time of the crash, the financial crash of 2008, which I can't believe is 15 years ago. And I'm sure that there's people out there saying, what is he talking about? The young ones are like, what crash? <laughs> <laughs> But um, yeah, it, it started then because in 2008, when that happened, I was one of the uh, unfo unfortunate victims of that entire financial overturn. Uh, my wife and I were working on a project for about five years to build a multi-million dollar health club and tennis center in New Jersey by the Jersey Shore. 
And over those five years, you know, we went through everything that you need to do to be able to get everything done. And the end of it was getting approval from the city and the state. And that took longer than we thought. If it was in 2006 or 2007, you walk into the bank in those days and they were giving out mortgages. They were giving out money like you were in Costco walking through the aisles and the women giving you the samples, you know? <laughs> right. <laughs> That's what it was like. But it, for me, it was 2008. And, you know, the years before that, I would be going to the bank like, yeah, come back to us when you're ready. And we came back to them when we were ready. And they're like, sorry, we're not lending now. The, the, the tides are turning. Like, what are you talking about? Well, things are tightening up. A month later, literally a month later in September 2008, Bernie Madoff, subprime loans, all that. And the entire financial world went topsy-turvy like a house of cards. And I was the joker on the bottom of the deck of the cards. Uh, I had over $3 million of my money and others invested in the project. project. And on that day, any hope of it, anything that was had was gone. Because nobody wanted to know from it. The banks were like, we don't even know what's going on with us, let alone worry about little old you. <laughs> you know? Wow. Uh, so, and it took me about a year to get out of that depression that that put me into. Uh, and uh, during that year, I went through some therapy. I went through some coaching. And when I came out the other side, I mean, I really had nothing left. Uh, I had to figure out what I wanted to do. So I said, let me figure out what do I love to do? I don't love being a, a businessman for the last 40 plus years of my life. By this time, I was in my late 40s. So the 30 plus years. I really was an entrepreneur from when I was 10, 12 years old. So that's why <laughs> it looks like that. Um, and I said, what do I like to do? And I looked over and I realized I was always involved in community events. And I was always the leader. And as a leader, people come in and say, ah, I don't know what I could do. I don't have that much time. I said, well, let me show you what you could do in the small time that you have. And I would show them their potential and be there to cheerlead them and, and, and keep them accountable and show them how their potential is right there. And I realized I was a life coach. So I was like, oh, I should do that. <laughs> so I started researching it and I decided in a place I wanted to go to become a, a coach. And about two months before the, the training started it was my 24th wedding anniversary, which comes out on uh, the day after uh, uh, Valentine's Day. Pretty romantic. Well, on that day, on my 24th anniversary, my wife said, I'm done. I want a divorce. I'm like, wow, I can't catch a break. Why does everything keep happening to me? And that was my mindset. I was worried about everything. I was always thinking that everything's happening to me. So I was like, you know what? I made this commitment to do this. I want to change my life. And I think God was tapping me on the shoulder and telling me, oh, you want to do life coaching? Well, let's make sure you really figure out yourself first. So I went into the coach training program. And that first weekend, they said to me, you don't have to be who you think you have to be. You could be whoever you want to be. It's just up to you to decide what that looks like. I was like, oh, wow, that's interesting. And they had given me some books to read. And one of them was The Four Agreements by Don Miguel Ruiz. You know that book? I do. I just got it because it was mentioned in Our Ladies of Leadership book. And I just did some rearranging. So I just picked it up and put it on my desk. So, yes. Fantastic. Well, they're all fantastic agreements. But the one that hit me straight between the eyes, literally like, oh, my God, was don't take anything personally. And I was like, whoa, what do you mean I don't have to take anything personally? That's what I've been doing my whole life. And it was as if he told me a secret that people have been telling me my life, my whole life. But until that moment, I wasn't ready to hear it. And I was like, I don't have to carry the world on my shoulders. I don't have to be the one that's responsible for everybody. And I realized that as somebody who took things personally, I was a people pleaser. I had control freak. And at the end of the day, I had a very short temper. And I needed to change all those things. And going to life coach training got me on that path. A year later, I finished coach training and I became a divorce recovery coach. Makes sense. I just came through <laughs> a divorce. So, and I did that for a few years and it was fantastic. And then I decided, okay, what do I want to do now? I want to, I'm, I'm developing myself. I started dating because now I liked myself and I loved myself and I understood the things that held me back and the things that were my strengths. And I understood what values were. Before, I never even knew what a value was. I thought I did, 
But once I went to coach training, I really got to understand it. And I was coaching my clients around it. So I'd go out on the dates and I would start talking to the women and asking them questions around their values. I was basically interviewing them and they had no idea. But this was my way of saying, is this somebody I want to continue with? Because I realized in my first marriage, our values were totally different. And we were in a codependent relationship. And I didn't want that again. And one day uh, I, I went out on a date and this woman was checking out all, all the boxes. It was unbelievable. I went again and everything was great. A month into it, I said, I got to tell you something. You don't need to say it back to me, but I'm falling in love with you because I love who you are. And I love that you see me exactly as I am and you're not trying to change me. And I'm very happy to say about uh, three weeks ago, we celebrated our fifth anniversary. That is awesome. Congratulations on that. And it took a journey to find yourself, to find that that love for yourself through all the ups and downs and everything that life throws at us, right? And I love that yep. life throws it at us, right? So you actually adopted yep. uh, this word and uh, it's a life code for you, right? So exactly. what is wh what does that mean? Life. Okay, so uh, as I was going through this transformation, I decided that I was doing a lot of things and I'm ADHD. So I was even doing things like meditating. Could you imagine an ADHD guy meditating? <laughs> you know, it's like, <laughs> when is this going to be over? <laughs> and I was doing the one where the guy was in my head, headspace, where he was guiding me. But, and one day I had this download of information that I was loving my life and everything I was doing. And I wanted to show other people the same thing. Well, after I finished that 10 minute meditation, I wrote for over two hours. And out of that came that I wanted to show people how to enjoy life. So I took the word life and broke it into an acronym, live incredibly full every day. And for me, that means being happy and having a meaningful life. You can be happy with no meaning and you can have a meaningful life and not be happy. So it's encompassing both of those and really loving life every day and looking for the reasons to love it. I love when you shared that with me when we were having our virtual coffee and connecting because it's really important for us to know that those two don't always go together. Right. They, I mean, just because you're happy, that doesn't mean that you are living a meaningful life. So when you break that down, what are some examples that you tell your clients or people that you speak to when you see them happy? Like, from the person outside looking in, how do you identify that and how do you help them grow from that? Okay. So really when you're saying you're happy, that's mostly a selfish state of being, which is fine. It's okay to be selfish, to be happy, but a meaningful life is selfless. You're going out and you're doing for others. So if you are mother Teresa, that's a meaningful life, right? But was she happy? We don't know, but she did do meaningful things. Okay. For me, spreading the word of life, living incredibly full every day, showing people that they have the control within themselves to shift their mindset. That's meaningful. And me waking up every day and looking for the opportunities, looking for the ways to be happy. That's the happy part. And it's about understanding that it's in your control. And remember earlier, I said, I, I, everything was happening to me. Well, now I say that everything happens through me because it's in my control what happens. And if it's not in my control, I'll just have to deal with it. Yeah. Yeah. That's very clear and to the point. I, I love that perspective. But can you discuss the concept of abundance versus lack? Because yeah. we can be happy, but are we abundantly happy, right? Right. Um, exactly. And are we happy when we lack? Right. Exactly. <laughs> and shouldn't we be happy? <laughs> yep. A hundred percent. So for me, lack starts with two words. I can't. When you say I can't, you're already setting yourself up for failure. Why not say, how can I? Or I can, or let's just do this and figure it out along the way. Right. And then it goes a little deeper. Uh, and the reason I put on my glasses is I wanted to read something to you. It goes from being in a mindset of self-conscious to a mindset of self-aware. Okay. 
most people think they're self-aware. I did. I was like, oh, I know everything. I know what's going on. But there's a difference. And when you start to understand that difference, it becomes to opening up that change from lack to abundance. So the reason I put my glasses is I have a card deck. It's called Warrior to Warrior, as is everything I'm doing. And, you know, because I went from being a warrior to somebody who says, I can accomplish anything I want. Any obstacle that comes in my way, I can figure it out. And to me, that's a warrior. I'm not talking about the guy wearing the, 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 the knight outfit and on the white horse. You know, he's a warrior too, but this is my type of warrior. And men and women are both warriors. So in my card deck, I'll find it in a minute. <laughs> I have a card that talks about the difference of self-aware versus self-conscious. Okay. So let me just read a little bit of it. Self-consciousness mm -hmm. comes from a place of negative energy, guilt, conflict. <laughs> I'm trying to figure out the card. <laughs> guilt, conflict, and doubt. Self-consciousness is more outward directed. It's being more concerned about what others are thinking of you and how the situation is going to affect you. You probably react to uncomfortable situations instead of respond. There's a little more, but you get the gist. Mm -hmm. Self-awareness comes from a place of positive energy, acceptance contentment, self-assuredness. Self-awareness is more inward facing. You have an accurate, realistic understanding of how you are responding to situations and how you feel about things. That what is you? awesome. I need those deck of cards. I know you send me the link. We're going we're gonna to put it in those show notes because sometimes we need to be reminded. And these are the things that we have been told throughout life. These are the things, uh, the experiences that we have been um, witnessing in our own lives and in others. And we know the right things to do, but we just don't do them. Right. And what really do you, what is your opinion on what comes from us just not taking action? Uh, well, what comes from that is uh, lack of self-confidence, lack of self-esteem, and that feeling of defeat that <laughs> why bother? You know, it's just not going to work anyway. And instead say, why not? And if it doesn't work, figure it out and do something else. You know, somebody said to me recently, you know, I prayed to God. I asked him for things and he didn't answer. And my answer is, well, either he said no or he said, you're not going the right path. You need to make a course correction. And you are just too busy focused on what you want that your energy of lack is holding you back. Wow. That is powerful because I've never actually seen it that way. And I just kind of want to backtrack a little bit because you transition from this business um, environment, you know, the corporate uh, financial space, and then you went into life coaching. And what I wanted to say about that is that sometimes you just kind of fall into it, right? It doesn't organically, um, like it's not something that comes off your head be until you're actually in the moment. You're like, wow, I can do something with my experiences, my expertise, and things like that. And that's what I love about life coaching, because that wasn't my um, initial direction. You know, I was right. a realtor. I'm a notary. I coach notaries. Um, very different. I was in corporate America for so long. Um, and what I really wanted to do was just speak, just speak and empower. I didn't know the path of becoming an author of having this podcast. Like if I did not say yes to myself and want to make a change, whatever change, none of this would have happened. Right. So just right. to see that you, you definitely confirmed it for me. And yeah. I know you confirmed it for many on this call, but we're going to take a quick break and listen to our sponsor. And then we're going to come back and I have a few more questions and then you can tell us how we can connect with you. Sounds good. Awesome. One moment. Hi, my name is Jose Escobar, and I'm the founder and CEO of the Connected Leaders Academy. We're a growing tribe, a community of entrepreneurs all over the world, globally, all across the country, high performers, titans of industry. If you're an entrepreneur and you're looking to grow personally and professionally, scale your influence, develop your skill sets, 
move the needle in your business, more clients, more money, more profit, the bottom line. And of course, grow your circle and your network like never before. This is where you wanna be. Join the Connected Leaders Academy today. We are scaling massively. We wanna welcome you in. Check me out on Instagram and on Facebook, the at symbol JASCO25. We look forward to having you join us. Take care. Welcome back. Welcome back. We are with Martin Salama. Salama. Like salami, salami with an A. <laughs> I'm going to get it. I'm definitely going to get it. Well, now salami. that I said salami, you'll remember it. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> and we are here just sharing his life code, his book, Warrior. Um, warrior to warrior, which is like that worried state of mind. So becoming a warrior, really living uh, that life of purpose through his life code. Um, but I had a question. Why is it important? Because when we are in these spaces and we're making these decisions in life to either move forward, stand still, or make a difference, we are in our emotions, right? Yep. Uh, we, we always act on emotions versus logistics or you know all the other factors that come right. uh, with that. But why is it important for someone to build their emotional strength to decision make? Yeah. Yeah. So it's so, so important because everything that you look at has to do with how you are feeling about it. Right. And if you allow your emotions to take over nine times out of 10, your emotions will control the things that you do instead of you controlling your emotions. And to me, there's a difference between emotions and feelings. All right. To me, an emotion is something that happens in the moment. Right. I'm angry. I'm happy. I'm, I'm sad. Right. And then the feeling is what kind of anger are you? What kind of sad, depressed, whatever it is. And so one of the things, and your guests could go there when we're, you know, if they can download, if they want to connect with martin.com and I'll give them a chart that across the top says the different types of emotions. And then each line has its own list of feelings. Strong, medium, and light. For example, you're angry. Are you enraged or are you just a little ticked off? Mm -hmm. Right? So once you start to identify what kind of feelings they are, what kind of emotions you're having, now you could start to deal with it. So I took the word life again, all right, and I used it for another acronym with four steps in it. Uh, the, and it's called the Life Mood Lifter Method to build your emotional strength. So the first L is, oh, wrong card. <laughs> <laughs> I have so many life ones, but the first one is um, listen to your inner voice and let your emotions come out, whatever it is. Listen to your inner voice and acknowledge that emotion. So many times, so many people are angry and they'll hold it in or they'll just freak out about it. You know, two sides of the coin there. But if you listen to your inner voice and acknowledge that emotion, that's one. The second one is I identify what the feeling is. Like I said, you look at the chart and I have clients who leave that chart on their desk. And they look at it and they go, wait, which, which one? And then I give them a worksheet. Okay, listen to your emotion, listen to your, to your inner voice. Write down, I'm angry, whatever it is. Then look at the list. What type of anger am I? Right? Then the next one is F, find out why. Question yourself as to why are you feeling this? Did someone hurt you? Did someone help you? Whatever it is, get down to it and understand it. And then recognize... Again, like I talked about in the uh, about the four agreements, am I taking it personally? Is it about me or is it about them and they're just projecting it on me? <laughs> you know? Yeah, there you go. <laughs> right? And then the last one is E, engage in change and take action. So it sounds very interesting in a very theoretical way, right? So how about if I give you an example in my life, how I was able to use this as I put this together? Early on. <laughs> so I went through life coach training and I got my divorce. And about two or three years afterwards, my son was getting married. 
and I was living in New York and my ex-wife was living in New Jersey. And I come from an Orthodox Jewish community, uh, which means we, we observe the Sabbath and uh, all that. So driving on Saturdays is, is a no-no. Uh, and the week, be- the Saturday before the wedding, often, but not always, will uh, they'll have a, a, a lunch in the, after the synagogue. The, son, the boy will go up to the, to-, the, to the Torah and all that stuff, and there'll be a little bit of celebration, but it doesn't happen all the time. So he was in New Jersey, and whatever, he comes back after the weekend, and he says, Dad, I'm so embarrassed. Mommy made the lunch. And you weren't there. My in-laws were there. My future in-laws were there. Other family members were there. And you weren't. I felt terrible. The old me would have ripped into him and then picked up the phone and ripped a new one into my ex-wife. Right. The new me said, wait a minute. What am I going to do with this information? First, I turned to my son. I said, Caesar, it's not your fault. It's okay. Thank you. Thank you for coming to me. I have nothing to forgive you for. You did nothing wrong. Now I said to myself, what am I going to do? This is Sunday, Monday. The wedding is Wednesday. The old me, like I said, would have freaked out. And what would I have done, accomplished? I would have fed my ego. That conscious part of me. And I would have freaked out on her. And then he would have found out. And she would have found And she, he would have been upset at the wedding. And she would have been upset at the wedding. And then my family would have found out. And her family. And everybody would have said, there he goes again. Just <laughs> losing it. You know, I said, I can't do that. So I said, what kind of anger am I feeling? I'm feeling enraged. I was at the top of the list of anger. Right. I said, okay. Find out why. Why did I feel this? Well, I felt that she disrespected me. Well, she's my ex-wife. But it wasn't so much about me and her. It's about the children. It's about the family. It's about the whole, yeah. and a picture as it were, you know? I wrote down what I'm feeling. I'm feeling hurt. I'm feeling this. I'm feeling whatever. And then I said, what am I going to do about it? I said, I'm going to wait. So the next thing is engage and change. Right. Action. So I said, it's not going to do me any good to tell her this before the wedding. So I decided I'm going to wait until a few days after the wedding. Let the wedding happen. Let everybody be happy. I'm going to compartmentalize it and put it away and not think about it right now. Right. And I went to the wedding, had a great time, beautiful thing. Everything was great. Two days later, I called her up and I said, listen, with a controlled anger, this is what you did. This is the message you sent to our children that I am not important in their lives. That what you did is not, I, it didn't matter whether she heard a word I said or not. It didn't matter. For me, it was my way of feeling better about what happened. And, and expressing my feelings and taking care of my emotion. And I ended the conversation, and this was not something that I, I had planned before, but I ended the conversation by saying, thank you for divorcing me. And at wow. that moment, it was like closure. Yeah. Wow. Taking those steps. And and that's kind of what we fail to look for, for that closure. And we want to do it in ways that don't serve any of us, don't serve the situation, because obviously usually things happen after the fact, right? So for you to put together this just way of awareness and say, you know what? I have the control. I should do it X, Y, and Z. And this is how it's going to give me the closure and it's going to benefit me. So. That is just amazing. Definitely intrigued in that story because sometimes, again, we fail to take that time, one. Then we regret what we've said, what we've done, our actions. And then we're seen in a different light that's really not us. But you can always recover because if you've experienced this, now you have a tool. So you need to go back, rewind this, write it down because I think that was uh, amazing. And it's possible that first time you're going to get it wrong. It's very possible. It's I think we've already got it wrong because I'm sure it's we've already went through these right. uh, situations. But in it's, our like, life. it's like muscle memory. You got to work on it. Yeah. Yeah. And have grace on yourself as well during the process because, again, we're human. We have these emotions. We have these feelings. And it's just, again, just going back, 
being aware of it, being aware of what really we want to be remembered as what, you know, our core values. It's just a stack of things. Like they didn't give us a manual about life, right? (laughs) They just bring you into this world. We didn't have any particular decision. We were just raised with what was put out there. And then we now as adults have those choices to pick and choose what we're going to identify as. And I think you're on a great uh, path to sharing that to even many and many, which (laughs) I'm sure you already have. Thank you. Thank you. It's interesting when you said being aware. So uh, as another tip, when you're being aware, say to yourself, am I being self-aware or am I being self-conscious and allow yourself as that as a, as another exercise as figuring out where you are on the scale. And if you're being self-conscious, it's okay. Because you know what? You're aware of it. And the next time you may be a little less self-conscious. Yeah, absolutely. So share with us seven secrets to live an abundant life. Okay. So what I did was I took the word warrior and I broke it down into uh, another acronym. (laughs) I love acronyms myself. I do too. So this is the seven secrets, seven, the abundant warrior within seven secrets to unrounded mindset. So W wisdom, seek wisdom, always be learning, always look for something new, always allow yourself, never say I know, because I know is telling the other person, I don't care what you're saying. Wow. You know? Oh yeah. Let's do uh, I know. You don't even realize you're already being defeating and negative with that word. I know say, Oh, that's interesting. That's interesting. Do that one instead. The next one is three A's, which is part of my course. And I call it the cycle of A's, which goes to something you were talking about before Nikki. Remember how you said a year ago, you never thought you could do this, but you jumped in and you had an attitude of whatever happens, happens. Right? So my cycle of A's is ask, act and attitude. Ask the universe for what you want. It could be God. It could be the universe, whatever it is. But that's the law of attraction. And people say, oh, it doesn't work. Well, of course it doesn't work. You've got to do number two, act. Start doing the work towards getting it. Be proactive. Make a list. Can't wake up and say, I want a million dollars. And then it just shows up a pot of gold outside your front door. You got to do something for it. And if you don't believe that you're worth a million dollars, you're already defeating yourself. So maybe start out with $5,000 or $10,000 and go from there. And then the last one is the most important. It's attitude. Don't have a strong desire that gives off thoughts of lack. Don't say, oh, I have to have this or I'm going to die. Because that's going to tell you you're going to (laughs) die. Die inside, at least. You know what I mean? (laughs) Because imagine if you said that, oh my God, how am I going to get gas? Oh my God, what's going to happen? Uh, you would have worried yourself into nothingness. Yep. But look, a year later, <laughs> I'm 101. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. Yeah. So the next one is R, realization. Be content. Say, I have everything. I have everything that I need. And this is great. But that doesn't mean don't look for more. It means Keep striving for more, but be happy with what you have right now. Then the next one is R, which is pills into this too. Recognize, have gratitude, be grateful for everything in your life. For me, I get up every morning and I write down three things I'm grateful for. Right then and there. I'm thank God I woke up and it's sunny outside. Thank God I, I was able to get my wife to the train in time to get to the city today. Whatever it is. The next R, the next one is I, I'm sorry, imagination. Think big. You know, Norman Vincent Peale, the power of positive thinking said, reach for the stars, you may hit the moon. (laughs) And there's nothing wrong with that. Not at all. (laughs) And then O, optimism. Look for positive things everywhere around you. What's wrong with wearing rose-colored glasses all the time? Nothing. Nothing. (laughs) <laughs> it's just because everybody tells you, oh, you're wearing rose-colored glasses. That's because they're wearing the dark-colored glasses and they want you down there with them. <laughs> and then the last one is resilient. Be flexible and have an open mind. Don't be married to the results because they might not be the results. Like I said, that wasn't God's plan for you. 
So you thought this is your plan. It may need tweaking. It may need to be adjusted. Be flexible. Be resilient. Oh, my goodness. So I usually I don't take notes while I'm interviewing, <laughs> but I knew this was going to be powerful. And I had to use you, you see me looking down. So I had to yep. take notes. I'm always a student first, no matter what. I'm always absorbing, taking, because we're always in that growth process. Right. And the thing that really stood out were the two A's. Um, be, and you said something about ask God for it, right? The law of attraction. All of this happened because I asked. And what did I ask for? In, I believe, February of 2022, I asked God for community. I said, I want a community I can serve and that can serve me back. And I, I met my publisher in April, met um, my sponsor, Jose, in May. Well, let's give a first. shout out to Jose. Jose is an unbelievable guy. <laughs> you, if you're a business owner out there of any sort, you have to have a Jose Escobar in your life. Absolutely. A hundred percent agree. Thank you so much for that shout out. I'm sure he's definitely going to appreciate it. He was actually on yesterday just seeing how Bomb Global has manifested with the podcast um, right. as a sponsor. He jumped on at the very beginning. And um, so I, I, I met him, started the podcast, created my community, created my um everything else that's, you know, still to come. Right. Yeah. But it was only because I asked, I acted by going to an event to getting in the room and the attitude switched right there from that mindset of, I can't, I lack, I, I'm not worthy because for a quick second, I was like, what do I have to offer this community? Right. I wanted it, but what did I really have to offer? And what that did for me like a minute later, I was like, you know what? I'm supposed to be here for a reason. Whatever that looks like, yep. we're going to just go for it. And it was game on from there. The attitude changed to say, you know what? I'm going to receive and accept whatever God is going to bless me with in this community. And it, that is those triple A's just really, really stood out amongst everything else. But that is my story. Right. So I definitely have to get those cards for right. sure. Because there's going to be times where you're like, you're not sure of yourself. So you pull out the cards, you pull out the, the cycle of A's and you go through them and you go, oh, what, what do I do with this? Because the cycle of A's is in there too. As each one is yeah. its own separate card. Yeah. Just to give you an idea uh, what that looks like. Here you go. So I put it in a cycle, right? Mm -hmm. Because it's a perpetual motion. Yeah. Over and over. Don't just do ask and then act and then attitude it, yeah. it's everything because it has to do with everything you're doing in your life yeah this has been powerful oh my goodness thank you so much i'm glad jose actually connected us too he's like hey you have That's to right. meet um martin he he you have to have him on your show he'll be a great guest and um again when you when people in this community and when you're really trying to maximize and level up you have to listen to those around you they're not Things don't happen by accident. Things happen yep. very purposeful. And I needed to hear that. I needed to to have you on this show so you can share with our audience all this abundance, life, um, hope, and experience that is available to us if right. we just want it. We have to just go out there and reach it, right? Right. You know, I, I, I say this often. You <laughs> go alone, but you don't grow alone. Absolutely not. Absolutely not. And I've always uh, said that since, you know, the growth just started just compounding. It's like, I didn't do this by myself. Like the community definitely inspires you. They take you, they give you those ideas you never thought of. Those, those, uh, that's why I love the masterminds. Like when we get in these groups and we yeah. have these discussions and we're given these random questions that we never thought about. And maybe we're not in the hot seat, but when other people are giving other people advice and those challenges uh, that we're working through, even if it doesn't pertain to you, like I said, I'm writing notes, even if it's not directed to me, you know, and how do you really maximize those things? How important is have, so you're a life coach. Do you have coaches? Oh my God. Yes. I have multiple coaches. And there was a time when I was going through all of that stuff that I talked about that I had no money. And I barely had a job that I said to myself, I can't afford to have a coach. And you know what I realized finally is I couldn't afford not to have a coach because you know, what's great about coaches 
is they support you. They're objective. And the most important thing is they're your accountability partner. You know, you it's easy to be accountable to your spouse, to your children, to your boss, to other people. But it's also easy for you not to be accountable to yourself. Uh -huh. So by having a coach, now you're being accountable to yourself by being accountable to your coach. Easily put. So I too have multiple coaches and mentors and being on both sides of the, 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 the door, right. Um, where we're coaching, we're inspiring, we're, we're that accountability for someone else. So there's always someone out there just waiting to guide you, to, yep. to help you see what you don't see. Cause there's so many blocks that we put on ourselves or we let other people dim our lights and we all need to shine. That's so right. that, that is what uh, this is all about. And Mar, right. you have been absolutely phenomenal. Thank you so much. How can people get a hold of you? So, you know, as you mentioned earlier, my book came out. So what's great about the book is it goes deep dive into the stuff I talked about today. Okay. That's number one. Uh, and then the cards are a way of carrying them around with you so that you see them. So I came up with a website. It's called connectwithmartin.com. You go there, you can get free gifts like how about a coloring book on the seven steps of the warrior mindset for the kids and for the adults, separate ones for each. Wow. <laughs> That's awesome. Right? Cause I made it for the kids. And then the parents are like, well, can I have one too? <laughs> <laughs> I love it. We're <laughs> always kids at heart for sure. That's right. And you can buy my book there. It'll, you click on the link. It'll take you right to Amazon to buy the book. You can get the cards. Uh, and yeah, and, and look, if you buy the cards and they're 50 bucks and they don't work for you. Okay. So you spend 50 bucks, but if you love what they're going, who knows where it can take you. So, yeah, I agree. I agree. And they are again, just constant reminders. And I think all life coaches should have an additional, uh, perspective, uh, cause I know I'm going to get them and I'll probably use them, you know, for my clients as well. I mean, it just goes on and on and on. Yeah. And I, I can't wait to see what we can do together, how we can work together and make something happen. Cause I think what you have going on is absolutely phenomenal. And you know, that, uh, bomb global is going on tour. So we will be at some point in New York next year. So <laughs> let's definitely stay connected. I'm going to show you a quick video on our first uh, Bomb Global event that we just had uh, May 20th um, of 2023. Let's let's look at that for a minute and then we're going to close out with more and, and some final words. That never. Oh my gets God. Oh, how do you that feel? so Just awesome. And I knew so many of the people. <laughs> yes. Yes. And I'm glad that, you know, we're connected now and we're going to make those memories together because that's what Bomb Global is all about. Just building leaders globally and taking all those um, experts just uh, in our community, just doing amazing things. We really want a uh, all inclusive win for each and every person that, you know, is a part of this movement, because that's exactly 
what it is. And I, I just, it never gets old. And the best part of it is just seeing all the smiles. Yeah. Seeing, you know, because I didn't get to view that. I was like in running mode while I was, <laughs> you know, emceeing and just making sure things were in order. But I was blessed yeah. to have a team and a community that absolutely supported uh, everything that went down uh, that day. And we just have to uh, take it around the country. So that's, that's what we're going to do. Right, fantastic. <laughs> I'm excited for it. Thank you so much. So Martin, tell us, just give us a final few words. What What do you want to leave our audience with just about anything that's on your heart right now and um, any inspiration to just take action? Absolutely. So you said something earlier that made me think about something. And, and I want everybody to think about it. You don't know what you don't know. And if you could have the right amount, the right people around you to tell you about what's going on, because as much as you think you know everything, as I said, I know means you're shutting down. So allow yourself to be open to learn every single day. Yeah, that's as simple as it gets. And just learning it is not like you have to apply what you're learning. The 100%. applying part is really where we get stuck um, at. I mean, if you can't afford a coach first on, you have books, you have YouTube, you have all these amazing things. I think your book is going to be absolutely phenomenal. I'm about to go get it. If I didn't already get it, because I thought I did order it when we talked last time. I know I, I bookmarked it, but that's where you start. Like right now, I think I'm reading the little red book of selling. Um, it, it's, it's in a, I, I don't know if you've read this book, but no, that's not, it's a, now it's on my list. Yeah. So it's 12.5 principles of sales greatness, but then you have all these communities that are authors as well. Support your local authors within your community as well. They have just as much value and uh, information. And that's what I want to make sure that happens in our community, that we keep it uh, in our community first. And all those other books will definitely help us um, along the way. But really here, get to know our community authors as well, because they have so much to say. Thank you so much, Martin. It has been phenomenal hanging out with you this morning. And I can't wait again uh, to reconnect and see what happens. Thank you all for tuning in to another episode of Building a Leadership Mindset Podcast. Uh, connect with us at www.buildingaleadershipmindset.com where we have everything. It's a one-stop shop. You can listen to all our podcasts. You can get connected with all our projects that we're having and how you can get involved on this movement. Thank you so much. And wait, did we say how we can get a hold of you? Well, just in case we didn't, connect with martin.com. Okay. I think I did hear that because I even wrote it down, but I want to make sure that we highlighted that as well. Get connected with Martin. He's an amazing, amazing guy. I can actually hear you talk all day um, and be inspired. <laughs> so super excited. Have a great day, everyone. And remember to like, comment, subscribe, and have a great day. And as I always say, make it count.